Um, so um, you, we know about Moore's law. This Moore's law uh, is basically an empirical uh, observation of how powerful our computer systems become. Um, and what this law says um, is um, since the early 70s, for the last 50 years, every 18 months, if every year and a half, our computers have become um, twice as powerful. And what that means is over the course of um, 30 years, our computers have become uh, more powerful by a factor of about, about a million. Um, and then over the course of 60 years, we project our, co our computers will be um, more powerful by a, a factor of a trillion. But we see um, that the Moore's law in, in all practical uh, purposes is slowing down uh, because our ability to make the devices uh, that form these computational machines, uh, the transistors, smaller and smaller, we're running into limitations. You cannot make a transistor that is smaller than a single atom, for example. Uh, you know, even with the Moore's law, even with this exponential uh, growth in our computational capabilities, uh, there are important problems that will always become uh, be way, way beyond the reach of standard computers. And these are important problems like optimization, uh, material functions, chemical structures, logistics. And you know, these actually form foundations of many of the computational um, challenges and economic driving um, drivers of our, of our economy today. So um, you know, what uh, can quantum computers do and where are we? Um, and we, we believe that a very powerful quantum computer when realized will be able to shed a lot more insight on how to tackle these important problems uh, going forward. Um, so um, I'm, I'm going to then tell you about some of the technology that we have de been developing uh, called uh, the QB technology from INQ. Um, and you look at this figure, um, and there's a little uh, chip. And that chip uh, looks like a little bow tie, uh, right? Um, that chip is about two centimeters on a side. And you see um, a series of blue dots on top. That is actually a, a blow up uh, of the individual atoms that we trap. Um, to use as quantum bits. And there are, in this picture, there are about 80 individual uh, atoms uh, that we uh, use as qubits. The separation between the qubits is about um, five uh, micrometers, um, and which is about 20th of the width of your hair. Um, and these 80 individual atoms uh, occupy about half a millimeter of space, which is uh, you know, very, very small space, half of, just, a, just a pure half a millimeter. Um, and that's basically where 80 quantum bits can reside. And if we have a full, if we gain full control over this 80 qubits, um, that quantum state becomes much more complicated than what you can describe using all the classical computational powers uh, that we have available to us today. Okay. And we, uh, out of these, uh, we are building our capabilities to fully control and um, execute computational tasks on this on these machines. Um, for example, uh, this is an example of how we uh, manipulate the qubits. Uh, that um, uh, picture on the, at the bottom is our, um, is our chip that where we manipulate the qubits. Uh, individual atoms are loaded in the loading zone, and then we can actually change the voltages to bring these uh, atoms together. And here we're adding uh, atoms one by one uh, to a chain, and we have uh, programmed our system to, to load exactly 23 uh, individual atoms. And they can be actually made uh, prepared uh, and get made available for, for quantum computers. So this is how we actually prepare our, our quantum uh, register. Uh, where are we today with this, and what can this um, uh, what can this potentially do? Um, the 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 challenge is we we all know about artificial intelligence or machine learning, big data. You know this is kind of has really provided us with a very powerful tool. Um, to control and understand and control um, uh, how things behave uh, based on accumulative data. Okay, so all of this typically start from the big data on the left, um, and this is where you know um, data is collected, uh, and this is uh, enabled by the massive uh, deployment of uh, you know, data collection devices like your your cell phones, uh, and that um, collects data uh, from whether your it's your shopping pattern or your your travel pattern, whether you get onto a bus or or, um, or subway, all of those transactions can be recorded, um, and then you accumulate this data that shows how people behave. Or for example, um, but that is just uh, just massive data, and you you cannot actually uh, recognize um, how how what information that that data by itself is is presenting. Uh, so what you need is you have to do the analytics. And this is, you, you actually parse the data, look at the data, and, and try to discover the patterns of, of what, what people are saying, doing, right? 
Uh, for example, what's the trend of online shopping this week? Or, you know, what, where are people traveling um, next weekend or during our, our Chuseok break? Uh, all of that analytics can be performed. And from there, we actually extract a model. Okay, and this model um, is a, a simplified uh, framework to understand uh, the behavior uh, that is presented by this data. Okay, so we have to, once we have the data, we have to uh, perform the analytics. And from the analytics, we have to create the model. And once you have the model, then you can start to predict. Okay, and that's kind of what the, what the power of AI and ML uh, machine learning is. Uh, for example, if you have a, a lot of collection of data of uh, how young people listen to music, um, and then you can actually start to recommend what this person would want next based on that pattern. So the model allows you to predict um, and then actually make projections of, of, of uh, what the future opportunities are. Um, what are some of the addressable uh, applications that we can think about today? Um, the quantum computers we have built are, are highly reconfigurable because all of the computations that we do is entirely software programmed by uh, tailoring the, the laser pulses that we apply to these things. Um, and then uh, it, it is, uh, be we believe that it can solve very difficult problems in, in many industry sectors. Uh, for example, if you look at pharmaceuticals, um, it, you know, the, I think um, on, on the first day, um, Professor Hennessy uh, mentioned that uh, finding drug discovery is a very, very expensive process today. And that is because the drug molecules are basically quantum mechanical objects. These molecules are uh, structured and they behave uh, due to the laws of quantum physics. And just like quantum computers, there is just so many possibilities that uh, modeling these molecules uh, with classical computers turns out to be extremely challenging. Okay? So how do you search through a very large uh, space of uh, molecular structures that can actually uh, perform certain chemical reactions to, to kind of help with the therapeutics or, or diagnosis? Uh, that turns out to be a very expensive proposition. Um, and we believe that a, a very powerful quantum computer can help understand those molecular structures extremely well. And those molecular structures obviously are important in, in energy sectors and transportation sectors. Uh, in energy sectors, for example, people are trying to understand how to build more efficient uh, batteries, um, how they can uh, store and, and more, more, more energy and extract it more efficiently. Um, and those are typically based on chemical processes and there is a similar uh, set of challenges in materials research. Um, transportation sector is very interested in this because well, you know, when you have traffic patterns or you're, you're trying to assign or design an airplane networks, um, the po number of possibilities to create that, that um, network is, is very large and it's very difficult to sort through or, or uh, parse through all possibilities and come up with the most efficient uh, transportation networks. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, interest in the transportation industry. Uh, to think about quantum, using quantum computers to solve their problems. And of course, uh, in finances, um, the market models and uh, portfolio optimizations, these are, are uh, highly critical um, and also potentially profitable uh, areas where the computational capability is not, just not able to keep up with the opportunities. The World Knowledge Forum.